Okay, let's talk about how to divide square roots when we have some variables involved. So we're talking about a problem, uh, something like this. So here we have uh, the square root of 12x cubed, and we want to divide it by the square root of 8x. So how do we do this problem? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this one specific problem, but you're going to definitely want to follow through with more practice problems uh, with this particular topic. I actually posted a few days ago a video on just how to divide square roots without variables. You might want to check that out as well because uh, we're going to be um, using some of those concepts in this particular video. But if you're in any sort of algebra course, you're absolutely going to need to know a lot about square roots. And this little symbol here, which most of you would call the square root symbols, actually what we call a radical. And you could do other things other than square roots. You can find the cube root, the fifth root. There's all sorts of stuff going on. So this is a pretty big topic. But again, we're only going to focus in on this one narrow question here and this one uh, particular example. So this is just a quick introduction to this topic. But I think it will be uh, pretty helpful uh, to you if you've been struggling with uh, how to uh, divide square roots with variables involved. But uh, we're going to get to all of that in one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And uh, over those years, I've come to uh, this belief. And my belief is... All students can be successful in mathematics, but there's two parts to how this works. One, you have to be willing to do the work, and two, you need the right instruction. You need a lot of clear and understandable instruction. You need a lot of practice and a lot of demonstration, and that's where I can help you out. So if you are willing to do the work, I could definitely uh, help you in middle school, high school, or even college-level mathematics. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Now, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, maybe the ASVAB if you're going into the military or teacher certification exam. I have a huge library of test prep courses, uh, so you might want to check those out. If you homeschool, definitely check out my middle and high school uh, math courses. I was just recently voted number one, or my courses were voted number one by a major homeschool publish, uh, publisher, so pretty excited about that. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. Now, if you think you can do this problem, go ahead and do it, but I would caution uh, those of you out there that think you can do this to make sure you fully simplify your answers. Okay, so I'll, you'll get, you'll see what I'm talking about here in just one second. But uh, if you want to go ahead and put your answers into the comment section, go ahead and do that. But let's get going with this problem. I'm only going to do this problem here because I want to take my time explaining it. So let's get to it. So here we have the uh, square root of 12x cubed, and we want to divide it by the square root of 8x. So the first thing we want to do is understand that this, we can write this division problem this way, okay? Here, we can interpret um, this situation as a fraction. So we have the square root of 12x cubed divided by, that fraction bar is the same thing as a division operator, uh, the square root of 8x, okay? So this is the first thing you need to understand. We're going to put this or write this as a fraction. All right, now, uh, there is a property of square roots that you definitely have to understand, and we're going to be using this quite a bit to uh, solve the rest of this problem, but it's basically this. The square root of A over the square root of B is equal to the square root, one big square root of A over B. Okay, so I can go, um, I can rewrite a square root where there's one individual square root in the numerator and in the denominator. I can write it as one big square root or I can go in this direction. And we're actually going to be uh, going back and forth between this property. Okay, so here uh, the key uh, to kind of get this uh, uh, going, the rest of this problem going, is I'm going to write this square root of the numerator and denominator as one big square root. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and start working on simplifying uh, the rest of this problem. Okay, so this is the property that you definitely need to understand when you are dividing square roots. Okay, so let's go ahead and now start working on the rest of this, and we'll pick up this problem down here. All right, so now we want to simplify the square root of 12x cubed over 8x. So what you want to do is you want to look at the factors of the numerator and the denominator. Now I'm, I'm kind of breaking this all out, but as you do more practice here, 
um, you know, you won't have to write it out in this manner. But 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3. 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. And then x cubed is x times x times x. And then here, 8x is the same thing as 4 times 2 times x. So what we want to do is identify uh, common factors, okay, between the numerator and denominator because we can cross-cancel them. So here, I could cross-cancel a 4 because there's one 4 in the numerator and one 4 in the denominator. So these like factors I could cross-cancel. And then I have an x down here in the denominator. I have three x's up here in the numerator, so I can only um, uh, cross cancel one x for one x okay so i could take this x out and this x out and that leaves me with three over two and this uh these two x's there so we can interpret that as the square root of three times x times x which is x squared over two okay so this is where we're at right now in this particular uh, problem. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, we're done, we did the problem, you know, everything's fine. Well, not quite yet, okay? There's more uh, we can do with this problem. We're on our way, but we wanna go ahead and continue to simplify this. So anytime you're taking the square root and there's an x squared or a squared uh, inside that square root, we gotta take it out, okay? And you'll see here um, how um, I'm gonna suggest you think about this. So let's go ahead and uh, pick up the problem here. So we have the square root of three x squared over two. So what I wanna do is I have this one big square root sign. So remember, I have the option of writing one big square root over this fraction or uh, two small square roots, an individual square root for the numerator and the individual square root for the denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this in this uh, manner right there. Now, there is a property of square roots when we multiply, okay, that we can pull the factors apart. Matter of fact, let me show you this real quick. Um, let me show you, this is very important, okay? So the square root of A times B, okay, uh, is equal to the square root of a uh, times the square root of a times the square root of b. Okay, this is the other property of square roots you need to understand. This has to do with multiplication. So again, if I have like for example the square root of 10, I can write that as a square root of 5 times 2, or I can just uh, break apart these uh, factors, the square root of 5 times the square root of 2. So you need to understand this. Okay, again, we can go this way or we can go this way with this property. All right, because this is going to come into play, and I want to really make sure you understand this. So here I have the square root of 3 times x squared. So these are factors, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these apart. So I'm going to write this as the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared over the square root of 2. Okay. Now, the reason why I did that is because I want to get to this x squared because I know the square root of x squared is x. Okay. And right now, I can actually... Um, I have this problem in a position where I can actually now take the square root of this x squared and write that as x. So, so far we're looking pretty good. I, I have a square root of three in the numerator. I have the square root of x squared, which is x. And then I have this square root of two down there in the denominator. So we're looking pretty good, but we are still not done. Okay, now some of you are like, what are you talking about? This is a lot of work. Well, yeah, you know, when you're dealing with uh, square roots and, and the like, you know, you do have to know quite a bit. And uh, believe me when I tell you, if you turn in your problem like this, uh, at this stage, your teacher would deduct points from you because there's a problem with this current situation right here. Okay, let's talk about what is the problem. Well, the problem is you can't have a square root in the denominator, okay? It's not allowed. Well, an irrational number, well, uh, something like the square root of two, okay? If I had the square root of four, I would just take the principal square root of that, right? And if it was in, in, the, uh, in the denominator and just write two, that's perfectly fine. But when you can't take the square root of a number, okay, and it comes out to be some decimal, we call that an irrational number, uh, you can't leave your answer that way. So there's a whole explanation behind that. Just know for now that you can't uh, leave your final answer with the square root in the denominator. So we can uh, fix that, though, by doing something called rationalizing. So here I have a square root of 2. If I multiply uh, that denominator by the square root of 2 and the numerator uh, by the square root of 2, and just let's notice here, right? You're like, well, we're breaking the problem. No, What's a number divided by itself? The square root of 2 divided by uh, square root of 2 is just 1, 
Okay, so we're not doing anything. And if I multiply this number over here times one, it's just the number. So we're not really breaking anything with this problem or changing uh, the value of it. It's just a little trick that we use. We call this rationalizing the uh, denominator so we can get rid of that square root. Okay, so let's go ahead and now multiply. So the square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four. And the square root of four, the principal square root, uh, i.e. the positive version of that is two. So we're very, very happy with that outcome. We got rid of that square root in the, uh, the denominator. But let's go ahead and continue on here with the numerator. So the square root of two times the square root of three X, that's gonna be square root of two times the square root of three, which is a square root of six with that X outside the square root. So this right here is our final answer. This is it. Okay, so how did you do? Right now, I would suspect maybe less than half of you got that right, but if you did get that right, well, I must go ahead and give you a nice happy face and A plus 100%. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you like four or five stars. Matter of fact, if you were in my algebra class, I might just say, just go home. You know what, I'll, I'll send you your grade A plus, take the rest of the year off. I said, I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're watching that guy on YouTube, not quite sure. Anyways, um, Good job. But if, uh, you know, you didn't really understand this, well, the whole point of this video is to teach you how to divide square roots with variables. And this is quite, uh, uh, in terms of difficulty, this is a pretty easy problem. Okay, so uh, you're going to want to follow through and practice, 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 right? Uh, a lot of students kind of get messed. Um, uh, they kind of do a lot of um, they make errors, let's say. They, uh, a lot of students make errors when it comes to square roots because they get these properties messed up or they don't finish and follow through all the way. So the only way you're going to get uh, better at this is by practicing. Remember, watching me do math is not the same thing as you getting better at math. You have to follow through. So a couple suggestions. One, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that you can um, take a look at to practice. But if you really, uh, really want to learn this stuff, I would suggest any one of my algebra courses. I I teach this stuff thoroughly, but uh, if this little video helped you out in some small way, consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math by calculus and everything in between. Uh, so if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.